Hi, welcome to Guru Focus. This is the third episode of Mastering the Guru Focus site, a series designed to be your one-stop starting point to learning your way around at gurufocus.com. In this episode, which is all about backtesting, we will be learning how to use the historical and backtesting tools available on the Guru Focus all-in-one screener. All right, so in our hypothetical search, let's say we want to look for stocks of companies that have shown high growth in their revenue and earnings per share while maintaining relatively healthy balance sheets. To do this, we'll go over to the Growth tab and select a lower limits of 10% for the revenue growth rate for one year, three years, and five years and do the same for the earnings per share without non-recurring items. And for financial strength, we'll go over and set the Guru Focus financial strength rating to at least seven out of 10. And just to narrow our, our results further, we can set the market cap to at least 1 billion. And so after inputting these criteria, we get these stocks. Full disclosure, these are just random example criteria for demonstration purposes and are not intended as investing advice. So as you may have noticed, there's a little tab with blue text up in the top right corner called historical. So this tab allows you to screen for stocks that met certain criteria at a specific date in the past rather than the present. Uh, as you can see, I've selected 2015-07, July 2015, but we have data all the way back to 2006 as well. Now, to see how successful these criteria are at selecting stocks in general, we can utilize Guru Focus's backtesting tool. Scrolling down, we can see that we have active filters selected, which just means that we are viewing stocks that meet our selected screening criteria. Directly to the right is backtesting. So first we'll set our parameters. Say we want to hold 20 stocks in our portfolio at a time. We want to give priority to stocks with, high with financial strength and we want that financial strength to be high, so we'll sort them in descending order. And we'll set the start date as five years ago on July 2015 and date July 2020 with a six month rebalancing period and an initial investment of a million dollars. The initial investment doesn't really matter. The results will be the same unless you're wanting to see what your specific investing dollars would turn into. We go. All right, and we'll see the criteria show up here. And so it'll show the results for each specific rebalancing period. You can see that we didn't do that well that period, but we did well this period. All right, and when it's done, we'll see the performance tab at the end, which shows how well our stocks did. And it looks like our portfolio beat the S&P 500 and just barely beat the Dow, but it underperformed the, underperformed the NASDAQ. So, all right. One important thing to note is that the backtesting feature is not intended to identify the next big trading algorithm. Those are far more complex. For example, if we change the rebalancing period to the, for this search to 12 months instead of six, the portfolio might very well underperform every index. Rather, the backtesting feature can help us get a general idea of which types of companies are good investments and which aren't based on our individual investing styles. As well as which stocks met specific criteria back in the day before going on to become either great investments or complete flops. That's all for this video. Next time, we'll be taking a look at data from investing gurus and company insiders, so stay tuned. If you want to see more from Guru Focus, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us on social media. Thanks for watching.